Welcome to the approach to hypoxia. This is part one of a multi-part series. Part one is the air outside. My name is Jason Wechter. The approach to hypoxia has three main categories, the air outside, moving air into your lungs, and then moving oxygen from the lungs to the blood. In this presentation, part one, we are going to focus on the air outside. One of the most important details we want to know about the air that we breathe in is how much oxygen is in it. And the amount of oxygen depends on two main factors, the barometric pressure and the oxygen percentage. To best understand barometric pressure, we also need to know the concept of partial pressure. Partial pressure is the contribution of each component of air to the overall pressure. Air is comprised mostly of nitrogen and oxygen. Nitrogen comprises 79% and oxygen 21%. In addition to these two primary gases, there is also water vapor, which we call humidity. And it's difficult to say what the exact amount of water vapor is in the air because it changes with humidity levels and with temperature. However, not knowing the exact amount of water vapor or humidity or partial pressure of water in the atmosphere doesn't mean we're allowed to ignore that factor. This graph shows what the vapor pressure of water is at different temperatures. The blue arrow points to body temperature, 37 degrees Celsius, and this gives us a partial pressure of water of 47 millimeters mercury. This is important because when you inhale air, your body will moisturize and warm the air. And therefore, when you inhale air, the air inside your lungs will always have a partial pressure of 47 parts of water. Additionally, on this graph, we can see what happens at 100 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling temperature of water. At this temperature, the vapor pressure of water equals 760 millimeters mercury, which is the same as the air pressure at sea level, and therefore the water will turn from liquid phase into gas phase. So why are we spending a fair bit of time on water vapor? Well, the answer is we need to know how much oxygen we are breathing in. And the amount of oxygen calculated requires that we understand how much nitrogen, oxygen, and water vapor is in the air that we inhale. So we're going to show nitrogen at 79%, oxygen at 21%, and then you'll notice in different units, water is 47 millimeters mercury. So just to summarize, when we inhale air, we are inhaling 79% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and then our body is adding 47 millimeters of mercury of water. And the pressure of nitrogen plus the pressure of oxygen plus the pressure of water must equal the atmospheric pressure. If we rearrange this equation a little bit, we can move the water over to the other side of the equation. So the partial pressure of nitrogen plus oxygen is going to be equal to the barometric pressure minus the pressure of water. We know that the partial pressure of nitrogen and oxygen times 21% is going to be the partial pressure of oxygen. And so we can just do a little fiddling with the math equation here, and we can solve this equation for the partial pressure of oxygen. And we can fill in the numbers so that we can see at sea level, the partial pressure of oxygen is 140 millimeters of mercury. 
as you know, some patients are provided with extra oxygen. When this occurs, the percentage of oxygen increases above 21%, and the percentage of oxygen that is inhaled is called the fraction of inspired oxygen, abbreviated as FiO2. The FiO2 can range anywhere between 21% and 100%. The FiO2 should never be below 21%, and if this were to occur because there is some malfunction of equipment, then we would be delivering a hypoxic mixture of gas to the patient. We can now incorporate FiO2 into the oxygen equation that we just derived in the previous slide. So to summarize, the partial pressure of oxygen that you breathe in is equal to the atmospheric pressure minus the water vapor pressure times 21%. We can replace FiO2 for 21% to give us a generic PO2 equation. And when we do this, we can enter numbers, for example, at sea level breathing outside air, we would use a barometric pressure of 760, a water pressure always of 47, and the percentage of oxygen in the outside air is 21%. If a person was breathing 50% oxygen at sea level, then we would use this equation, and instead of using 21% for the FiO2, we would replace that with 50%. If you were to find yourself on Mount Everest, the atmospheric pressure would only be 235, and so if you were on Mount Everest breathing 40% oxygen, this is the equation for determining how much partial pressure of oxygen you were inhaling into your lungs. So in summary, the barometric pressure depends on the altitude. Higher altitudes have a lower pressure and sea level atmospheric pressure is 760. Remember that all of the molecules in the air, the nitrogen, oxygen, and the water must add up to the atmospheric pressure. Oxygen concentration, or the FiO2, is always 21% in the air. Giving extra oxygen will increase the FiO2. The humidity inside your lungs is always equal to 47 millimeters of mercury. The partial pressure of oxygen is written as lowercase p O2. It's very important that you memorize and understand the PO2 equation and to appreciate that the PO2 at sea level is 140 millimeters of mercury. This is the end of part one, the air outside. Part two will discuss ventilation, which is moving air into and out of your lungs.